Right guys, welcome to my shed. I thought it would be a good time to do a bit of a shed rundown because we are actually waiting on some more parts for our motor swap. But what I wanna do is just a quick little walk around, show you guys the tools and equipment that I have, show you how I've organized it. If you've got a shed at home, you might be able to take some of these ideas as well. I've done stuff on the cheap. That's the good thing about this shed. It's completely DIY. I have budget in mind all the time with tools and equipment and I haven't got super crazy stuff that's um, really hard to get. I've just got basic stuff. Now, let's start going through it. I'm gonna start with the uh, metalworking corner that we've got going on over here. We'll just work our way around and um, hopefully you guys can get something out of this video. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering and Diesel Conversions Australia. Right, starting over in the dark side of the shed, we've got our welding table. So this is sort of my metalwork area at the moment. Obviously we've got our Unimig down here. That is a Unimig 185. If there's one tool that I recommend everyone to get, it is definitely a welder. But other than that, we've got this uh, table that I made up. Now it's a welding fixture table, which means that you can actually put something down on it and put a G clamp through it and kind of clamp it down while you're welding it. That's why it's got the runs in it. Got a vise there, a um, little bit of storage here and some steel and a bin for all my off-cut steel. I actually like to keep a lot of off-cut steel because you never really know what you need. And honestly, the amount of times I've taken steel out of that bin and it's had the perfect piece I need. So I like keeping scrap steel. Behind here, we've just got sheets of metal. So there's aluminium, stainless and zinc behind there. Like to keep that stuff on hand as well because I'm always making little brackets and stuff. This welding table is also on caster wheels. So if we have a job, that is like a set of sliders that we've already done. I actually pulled this out to the center of the shed. Awesome tool to have in the shed, does take up a lot of room, but definitely worth having that. Right beside it, we have our new engine crane. Um, this is just a super cheap engine crane. It cost me, I think $260 on sale. So that thing actually worked really good though. So I'm very happy with that. We've got our uh, Tool Pro jack as well. There will be a trend here. You'll see a lot of Tool Pro stuff and it's cause I actually wait for the Boxing Day sales and stuff like that to get um, tools like this. So we've got a three ton jack. We've got two different size jack stands, three ton and I think uh, two ton. Now this shelf that I've hung up here, it is actually just an Ikea cube shelf. Now they cost somewhere about 60 to 100 bucks, I can't really remember. Um, but I've mounted that on the wall with literally just some $3 brackets from Bunnings. And that's actually really cool. I had that um, beside my cabinet here and you couldn't store anything underneath it, obviously. And it was just filling up with junk. Um, it was taking up a lot of floor space. So hanging this up on the wall, it's allowed me to put stuff underneath it and we've gained a heap of floor space back. So not too much going on in that cabinet, but nice to get it off the ground. Nice to have a little bit of storage for just some random stuff. Now this cabinet here, it's actually from Bunnings. Now these things are really, really cool, but they are a little bit expensive. I think they're about 300 bucks, but the good thing about it is no dust can get inside them. So I keep this as like a chemical cabinet. I hate when you grab a can of something out and there's all dust all over the top of it. So I like to keep them all tucked away. It's also a safety thing. You can actually lock it when you've got kids. Um, there's a little key there. So you can lock in all your chemicals that are gonna hurt someone if they drink them. Now I do like to keep this pretty organized. I always keep a uh, degreaser and aerosol can stocked up. I love tire shine after a good wash, love to tire shine my wheels. From here back is actually just detailing stuff. Um, this side here, we've got a bit of paint. We've got our mineral terps and stuff that's related to paint. And under here, we've got masking stuff, a bit of bog, a bit of uh, power steer fluid, brake fluid and stuff like that. And then down the bottom is our heavy paints like our 2K, uh, primer, stuff that you got to spray out of a proper paint gun. I actually love this cabinet. It's one of the best things I bought. I'm probably going to buy another one and um, put that somewhere else so we can store stuff and not see it as well. Now attached to that is a creeper. I just put some screws in the side and to get that off super easy. So put the creeper back up. I like having a spot for everything. That's the spot for the creeper. It was a little bit of an awkward gap here anyway. So it's nice to fill that. Above that cabinet, we have um, just some oil containers. There's normally a big oil drop container, but it's actually full of oil out the front at the moment. This thing here I just bought, but I think this is pretty cool. It's actually a jug, it's from Repco, holds six liters. So when you're filling up your car, you can actually just Google how much oil it has. Let's say if it's 10 liters, fill this up to five twice, and you know you're spot on with the oil. So this thing's gonna come in handy when I'm doing oil changes. Right, now moving on. This is actually probably my favorite part. We've got workbenches. 
Now, right here, we've got my pop's big vice. Now, he gave me this. Um, he used it for about 30 years, building trucks and stuff like that. Now, a piece of form ply is actually 2.4 long by 1200 wide. So what I did is I made this bench here 2.4 long by 600 wide, so it can take half a sheet. And I made that one two meters long by 600 wide, and that was just so I could fit the toolbox in the middle. Definitely pays with workbenches to um, think of that sort of stuff, because you've got to put something on top. If you had to buy two or three sheets just to do one bench, that's kind of silly. Now, on top of that, the yellow is actually some five mil aluminium plate. Now, I did get that for free. That's why it's yellow, um, but that just sits on top as a bit more of a protector. We can weld on it. We can smash stuff into it. And it's not going to matter. Tucked away here is my TIG sticks of metal, whatever you want to call them. And underneath there, we have the Renegade ACDC TIG. Haven't actually played with that too much, but I do plan to... Um, teach myself how to do TIG welding so we can do some pipe work and stuff on this patrol. As for parts containers, you can never have enough parts containers, I promise you this. Keeping organized is very important in a shed, um, but we've got heaps of parts containers. I also have these big blue ones, which I'll show you guys later, um, but we are actually in the middle of pulling a motor apart. So we are trying to stay organized. So that's why it's a little bit of mess on the table here. Got a grease gun hanging there. Uh, once again, these brackets are only a couple dollars from Bunnings. You can buy these uh, blocks of wood here from the timber section. I think they're only about 30 bucks. So for about 35 bucks, you get a massive shelf, real easy to fit. Really like having places to store stuff, but I haven't actually filled that up yet. We've just got some consumable stuff up there. Now in terms of the rest of the bench, we've just got a corner bench. I made this one so you can actually sit underneath. So at the moment, there is a little bit of stuff being stored under there for the conversion, but normally that would be empty. So you can actually sit under here if we were to TIG, we can actually TIG here. Um, if you are doing some wiring and stuff like that, it's nice to just be able to put your knees underneath a bench. Whereas if this bench here, it actually has a floor on it. So that is just permanently for storage. The stuff you can see on the walls behind me is actually soundproofing. Now, that is not necessary for anyone's shed. That is just for me uh, for filming. So it just helps with a bit of reverb in the uh, shed here. But like having that stuff, it definitely made a big difference with my audio. As you can see, fire extinguisher, very important near welding um, and also near my soundproofing. It's probably going to catch on fire one day. Um, and right there, we've got our whiteboard, which is really important just to track what we're doing on uh, motors and cars and builds and stuff like that. I really like to just write stuff down and you can actually start seeing your progress. I think it's really cool. So right here, we have a engine stand with a Ford JJ1 on it. Now, once we are done with building this motor, this will probably get packed up and uh, put over the side there. Uh, behind it, we have a parts uh, container. This thing has actually come in handy a lot of times. It's got spots for keeping bolts and stuff, which I am doing right now. But having that sitting behind the motor as I was stripping it down, tools and parts just got put straight on that, which I think was really, really nice to have. But I've used this in multiple situations when working on the car, just drag it over. You can sit stuff on it. It's really, really nice to have one of them. I think it only cost me about 70 bucks. So um, definitely worth the investment in my opinion. Then on the floor here, we've got one stool, which has actually got caster wheels on it. So that's for working on the motor. If you want to walk around it like this, if you want to go up to your car, take your wheel off something like that, and you just want a seat, this thing's really good. This is just a normal stool. Um, this actually stays at the workbench here. This one is a bit of a slut. It just goes around wherever it wants. Right, onto probably the nicest part of my shed, this Maxim toolbox. Now these things are budget friendly. I actually paid, I think $2,500 delivered to the front door. And um, these things are huge. I think this is a 54 inch, but it's actually 600 deep. So the drawers on it are nice and deep. Most toolboxes are 400 deep, which means you're obviously losing a lot of storage. So this thing's actually been sick. Now I got it with the lift up lid up top. We obviously have all our battery gear. Now I am a Ryobi guy. Um, simply for the fact that they're nice and cheap and they've got a replacement warranty. Haven't had any dramas with these tools yet. They are all the up-spec ones, they're all the brushless series. Um, so they aren't the cheapest ones, but they're obviously um, not quite as good as like Nikita and stuff like that. But honestly, for what I'm doing, roby has been great. They've got the six bank charger. I've also got some of their gardening tools as well. So people carry on about battery tools a lot, but honestly, they've been really good to me. So. That's my opinion on it. Now at the back here, we've got some of our sponsors um, and just people that we've worked with. So you can sort of have a look there. Over this side is the charging station. So we've got head torch, um, some rechargeable torches. All of my stuff is just about rechargeable. I don't put batteries in anything. I absolutely hate batteries. So 
Um, there's heaps of cords there. I've also got wireless charging for my mobile phone when I'm in here. One thing I actually really want to do with this toolbox is label it so that when other people are in here working, which is kind of rare, um, they can just come up and this one here will say miscellaneous, this one here will say pliers and they just know where to go. But it's just something that I haven't got around to yet. Now the top drawer is a set of pliers. Now I'm not gonna go through every tool. You can kind of just see what I've got going here, but there's just about every plier that I can think of in this drawer. And uh, most of them are tool pro. Once again, I do shop the sales. There's not much quality difference in a set of these as opposed to, let's say, a set of King Chrome ones. I think they're all very, very similar. So I've just gone with cheap ones, them. Right, now underneath that is spanners. Now I do have metric and imperial spanners. We've got ratchet spanners over here. You don't have ratchet spanners. I don't know what you're doing. You definitely need to get a set. Got ratchet, metric, ratchet, imperial. We also have just a normal set of imperial and metric spanners here. And then I have this extra long set of ring spanners here. These things are friggin' awesome. You see that's 22 and a 24, but you see the length of it. Really good for cracking bolts under cars. Those things are actually sick, love them. Now underneath that, we've got our screwdrivers. We have insulated set for working on power on the house and stuff like that, which you shouldn't do, but I do. Over here, we've got a screwdriver set. Now these screwdrivers are chicane, so they're not the um, cheapest, but they're not the best. But what I bought them for is they've got the metal um, tops on them. So you can smack them with a hammer, which I always do. I abuse the shit out of my screwdrivers. These things have actually held up great. So definitely recommend them. My old set of screwdrivers, it was a tool pro set, but I kept the thumb ones because these things do come in handy as well. But normally what I do with my old tools is as I'm getting new tools, I put the cheaper tools that I previously had into the patrol. So that way I've got like a semi tool kit in the patrol as well as having a semi tool kit here. It actually works really well. Underneath that, this drawer is just the grinding drawer. So we've got flat discs. Um, I've also got cutoff wheels, got heaps of them. I'm kind of weird too. I seem to keep all my old cutoff wheels. I don't know why. I really should start throwing these little ones out. There's a few different ones. I've also got my old Tool Pro um, grinder in there. What I really like to do is have one with a flat wheel and one with a cutoff wheel. So it's nice to have um, a few different grinders on hand. Now in these side drawers, the top one is miscellaneous. So we've just got picks, um, got some pens, a scraper, some thread tape, and some brushes and paint brushes and stuff like that. So it's not too much important stuff in here, but um, this is just a miscellaneous drawer where you just chuck your random stuff. Underneath that, we've got uh, shifters. I don't actually use shifters a heck of a lot. I actually basically hardly never use them. Um, so there's just a few in there. They're really cheap ones. This drawer here is measuring. So I like this drawer a lot. I do use these tools. Normal square here, we've got a speed square as well. This thing here is a digital angle finder. These are really, really good for fabrication. If you don't have one on eBay, I think this cost me about six bucks. Works absolutely mint. This is actually what I used to use. It's a lot harder to use one of these rather than that digital one. Now I've got two sets of feeler gauges. Um, they're really good for checking valve clearances and stuff like that. We've also got a set of calipers. This here, once again off eBay, it's actually called a fish hook scale. So this is good for measuring um, how much preload is on bearings and stuff like that. Right, now this one here is wiring. Now this is a messy drawer and I actually think that I do need a separate toolbox for my wiring stuff. It's just because I'm starting to collect a lot of stuff. So I'm thinking that underneath that workbench there, we'll get a um, mini toolbox that kind of fits under there and we'll put everything in there. Um, Cause I've got heaps of boxes of connectors. Like this is a box of um, miscellaneous plugs and stuff. We've got tons of wiring. Plus we've got that green box up there full of wiring and parts. So I need to get this out of this drawer, get them in a toolbox and get them organized. It's just something that's on my list. All right, now the big main drawer. This is my favorite drawer by far. This is basically what I work out of 90% of the time. So we've got a half inch socket set. We also have a 3.8 socket set. This SPC set was actually the first tool that I ever got as my birthday present. I think I was 16, so I've still got that. Um, there's a few sockets missing, but not the important ones, luckily. Over here, we've got drill bits, just all different ones. This is a grab and go set that I've just abused. This set here, I always use cutting fluid with, so I like to keep two. Um, one's really good, one's really average. Brand new set of Robies, just got them for Chrissy off my pot. Um, and a set of preferred. Um, they've kind of just gone missing over the years, but they were really good. Right back here, we've got a gear puller. Now this is for pulling um, bearings off or pulling gears off the front of um, motors. So that does come in handy sometimes. Back here, I've got my meter long um, breaker bar. This thing is really good for cracking big bolts. Yeah. Now over here, this is actually a quarter inch um, 
torque wrench. Now this thing is really good for torquing up bolts that don't need to be too tight. So I had to buy that for my transmission because the sump bolts uh, only torque to about 16 newton meters, I think. So needed that. Um, behind that is a half inch torque wrench. So that's for torquing up all my big bolts. Now we've got a set of impact uh, hex keys and also a set of color coded impact half inch sockets. They're really cool just because you can grab a color sit it down you know that red is the 14 and then you can always keep using the red one over here we've just got a full impact set so it's got metric and imperial i do use this all the time it's got a few little extensions and then also some 3.8 drive ones this little mini set here comes in handy as well it's actually got all the phillips tits torx bits um, it's also got a socket set with a quarter inch drive little mini ratchets nice for getting into tight spots so i do use that a fair bit I've also got here some um, open-ended sort of ring spanners. I can't remember what these are called, but these for getting like brake lines and stuff like that off. So they're kind of handy when you need them. Um, the rest of it is just miscellaneous. We've got like a uh, bearing tightener for patrols. Right now under here, this is my hammers and chisels. And we've also got a ball joint separator and a file. This here is actually a punch set. So I do use that quite a fair bit as well. Got a brass hammer, got a normal hammer and also a mallet. Just below that one, we've got uh, pry bars. Now pry bars come in handy. I actually have two sets and that was just so I could get the two big ones. I did just buy this one not long ago. It's a trim remover tool. These can actually save you from breaking some of your trim panels and some of the trim panels, especially on a TI, they're really hard to find. So that's why I bought them. Inside this set, this is actually a seal installer. So you can uh, smack in all sorts of different sizes of uh, oil seals. Now, these were really, really good doing my inner axle seals. You can quite easily damage seals, hitting them with like, um, punches and stuff like that. So it's really nice to have a flat surface so you can just tap seals in. Mm. Onto the next drawer, we've just got a miscellaneous drawer. So I've got my um, rivet gun. These are stethoscopes or whatever you call it for listening to where parts actually start to make noise. Got a staple gun, got a riv nut tool here, and we've also got a tap and die set in this kit here. This drawer is just my assortment drawer. So I've got uh, O-rings, snap rings, uh, C-clips, hose clips, um, we've got screws, roofing screws, washers, bolts, um, just miscellaneous bolts, nuts, stuff like that. I do use this drawer a lot, um, going in and finding this stuff. You just get it all off eBay, um, get the washers off eBay, the bolts off eBay, and I've used them a lot. I've reordered them a lot, and I'm very happy with um, that assortment drawer. In the bottom drawer is where I basically just chuck a lot of stuff. Now, there is some important stuff under here, though. We've got a staple gun. We've got our hole saw kit. I've also got a um, dial indicator, zip ties, bolts, nuts, cut off wheels for the uh, drop saw, tube notcher, silicon, you know, stuff that just randomly gets chucked in a drawer. I just chuck it in there. Moving over to the bottom corner, this is meant to be Allen keys. As you can see, I don't really use them too much. Sort of use the impact set um, the most, but we've got Torx bits as well. And this drawer is actually just an information drawer and we've got some gloves and stuff like that. That's a workshop manual for patrols. It's actually really handy. Uh, this is just sanding. So we've got a Roby sander. We've also got a whole heap of sanding pads and discs for that. And in this bottom drawer here, we've got our power tool. So we've got Roby um, circular saw here, got a Roby jigsaw here, got a Renegade um, heat gun, and we've got uh, some paint guns and stuff like that. And this is just a drawer that all the big stuff sort of just goes in. These two bottom drawers are kind of just like messy um, parts drawers. Right, now moving on to the last workbench. Now this bench uh, used to be one of my main benches. It's now probably my least used bench at the moment, um, but I still do use it for just turning around and placing tools on. As you can see, we've got the drill press uh, up here. Now this drill press was actually given to me. I will restore it one day. I'll probably paint it up and make it look pretty but it actually works really good. I really like it. It takes a lot of the effort out of drilling. Now, I've got a speaker. When I'm not filming, guys, I am blasting beats in here. So um, yeah, speaker's a necessity. Up here, we've got a pegboard. Now, I used to use this pegboard all the time. At the moment, it's actually just um, for safety gear. My opinion on safety gear is if it's not readily uh, accessible, then you're probably not gonna put it on. Um, very important, so we've got it all just readily available. Also got a mask for when I'm painting and stuff like that, I should be whacking that on. Um, but yeah, just safety gear, we've got some little clamps, some WD-40, um, just so you don't have to run to the other side of the shed. I'm always using my WD-40. Just there, I made um, a zip tie holder, so I've got some long zip ties in that. 
Um, and beside that, we've got our little mini press. Now this press actually come in handy when I was doing my diff, I had to press the bearings onto it. It's not a big press, only a six ton, but it actually pressed on the bearings uh, really, really well. So that's gonna be nice and handy. It doesn't take up any room in the workshop. Whereas if you have a big press, it takes up a lot of floor space. So that's a really nice, just sort of garage workshop press. Over here, we've got my miscellaneous bolts, nuts, washers. Um, they are all organized into their own bins. When I'm pulling stuff apart and you're replacing the parts, it normally does come with uh, nuts and bolts. So what I do with the old stuff, so I just quickly organize it, it doesn't take long, into um, these bins here. And honestly, I take a lot of stuff out of these bins before I even go into my new stuff. Now you can see underneath this workbench is actually just um, storage. So these are just cheap storage bins, I think from Big W. Um, I will be getting more of them just because they're black and red. I like the look of them, um, but they've just got old car parts, um, stuff that I don't really want to throw away in there, like old um, Red Arc gear and stuff like that. I do want to get more of them so I can start putting some more stuff into them as well, but they've just got random miscellaneous stuff. Over here is my Puma air compressor. It's ancient, we'll be doing that up as well, um, but it works really well. I've also got that hooked up to a retractable rear, which I'll show you guys in a sec. I will be actually running air around the back of the shed over to that workbench as well, just so I don't have to pull that retractable reel across. This thing here, Roby bench grinder. Um, I actually made this little stand up just out of some old box that I had from uh, building Cole's tray actually. This bench grinder, I do want to change out to one with a stone and a wire wheel. I actually thought I would use this sanding thing a lot more than I am. Um, I don't actually use it at all, but a wire wheel is really handy for like cleaning up old bolts and old parts and stuff like that. As you can see, we've got another one of those Ikea cube storage things. Now, hung this one up on the wall and it's actually going to be really good because I've got about uh, 25 of these blue containers and they were only a dollar each from Bunnings. So once I'm done with um, this patrol, this whole thing will just be storage for little um, containers like this. The other thing that's really cool is you can just hang stuff on the side of these cabinets. So that's actually one of those bonnet lights that you put up on your bonnet and it shines on the engine bay. Um, so they're really cool. Then moving over, we have our retractable air hose reel. Now this thing is an eight meter reel. Like I said, this shed is only seven and a half meters long, so it literally goes everywhere in the shed. I think that was about 60 bucks from Burson, so not a bad buy. Uh, and right here, I literally just took a piece of wood and screwed it to the shed. Um, I then took a couple of different screws and put them in, and this has just become my rack for my broom, my ruler, my level, some extension cords, jumper lead. I am a bit of a self-confessed clean freak, and having this um, organized like this really, really helps with um, staying organized in the shed. If I'm drilling something, it literally only takes two seconds to come and get the broom, sweep it up, put it in the bin, and uh, the broom goes back where it lives. Now, the last corner of the shed is uh, pretty much just the pressure cleaning corner. I don't really know what else to call it, um, but I've got my Kranzel pressure cleaner here that I rebuilt. Um, so it's ready to wash another thousand cars. So I've got some snow foam cannons um, and I've got a 25 liter of chemical that I'm trying out. Um, but this corner here, I've actually got this shelf here. I want to mount that so we can actually sit some nice chemicals up, but I just haven't got around to that. So this is an unfinished corner. I was actually also thinking about permanently mounting the pressure cleaner, having it plumbed up so I can just hit a button and um, go out and detail the car. I think that would be really cool. Obviously you've got our light switch here. So that is for the shed lights and the lights that are mounted on the outside of the shed to light up. Um, outside. Now, because I do YouTube, lighting was actually very important to me. Um, I did have some expensive high bay lights up here, but because they were expensive, I couldn't get enough of them in. Now, in a normal shed, you could probably get away with just four lights. At the moment, I think we have about 14. I actually can't look up at the moment. Got a whole heap of high bays up there. Um, they're the UFO looking ones. And we've also got three strip lights along the side there. And what I really wanted to achieve was um, being able to film in here. It's very hard with um, only just like four or five lights. You cast a lot of shadows and stuff. So what we've done is just put a light in every spot so that um, it's not really creating shadows on me when I'm talking. Now, the other obvious thing that I haven't mentioned yet is our epoxy floor. Now, this is just a DIY. Um, it's actually called Die Mark, the brand. Uh, and I've done this myself. All I did is acid wash. There is actually a video on my YouTube of me doing this if you wanna check that out. But this floor has held up really great. I went with the black. Um, with the white stone. Now, the only downside to black is when you drop something, it is hard to find. But other than that, looks really, really cool. It is dirty at the moment. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend epoxy, especially if you're working on cars because you spill a whole lot of stuff that you can just wipe up. Now, a few special mentions. Um, I've got a fan up here. Now, unfortunately, I can't use that too much when I'm filming because it's really, really loud. 
But when I'm not filming, I use that thing all the time. It actually has three speeds, rotates back and forth. Now the other thing that's up there, it's kind of glary, that is a before and after photo of uh, when I restored coal. Now that one there was actually a birthday present, but I think it'd be really cool to carry the tradition on as we do more builds um, throughout this uh, YouTube career. So that's actually basically it. That's my shed in a nutshell. Um, like I said, waiting on parts for this motor. So I wanted to just do a bit of a fill-in episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you um, can take away something from this video uh, and use it in your own shed. But yeah, we definitely have gone through a whole lot of renditions of this shed. And as it sits at the moment, it's definitely the most productive. Now, two things that I really wanna do is I really would like to insulate the roof there just because it does get hot. I did put this whirly bird in, but it doesn't pull that much out, especially on a still day, it doesn't even move. Um, but insulation on the roof would be a massive help with the heat. And also we have two roller doors here. I'd really, really, really like to just have one roller door so I can actually drive the car in the middle. Those are all things that can come later. At the moment, we just rip it in, which is why there's nothing really on this side wall that's protruding too much just so I can just drive the car straight in. Now, I've got to push the patrol back in by myself. So I'm going to go and do that. Um, hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.